Hey y'all. I don't know about everybody else, but it felt like the first week of June came and went like a wrecking ball. I had all kinds of plans for what I was going to uh, record and post about last week and I didn't do hardly any of it. So, or any of it really. I posted one read out loud video, but I'd wanted to do a May wrap up and I'd wanted to do a super queer TBR for June. And I didn't do either of those things. Although part of the reason why I didn't do my TBR is because my books didn't come. I ordered them um, from a local shop that is doing hand delivery. And one of the books wasn't on the shelf yet. So they aren't delivering any of them until that book gets into the store. So that's what I was waiting on. Although honestly, I don't know that I would have done it. It's been a week, y'all. It's been a year, y'all, hasn't it? This week, because of all of the protests and um, some of the tributes, there have been extra meetings and extra gatherings and extra interacting via social media and through Zoom. So I think that um, those were more important than me figuring out how to get to two to three videos per week. But I'm glad to be here with you today. Hopefully, um, the neighbor is almost done mowing his lawn. I swear he mowed yesterday. I think it's one of the reasons, one of the ways that he gets out of his house is to mow his lawn because I swear he does it every two days or something. Here's what's going on behind the camera. My other neighbor. Anyway, so this will be a little bit of a May wrap up and a little bit of a current reads post because I can tell you what I'm reading right now. For May, I read 11 books. Some of them were rereads and about half of them were audiobooks. I started the month off with House of Earth and Blood. I read it because um, I'm doing the Read Harder Challenge for 2020. Does everybody know about the Read Harder Challenge? There are 24 categories of books and you can choose any book that fits the category. So one of the categories this year is a door stopper written by a woman, which means that it needed to be at least 500 pages. The House of Earth and Blood was over 700 pages. Also, I like Sarah J. Mass's writing, so um, I wanted to read the book anyway. It was getting a lot of hype and a lot of good buzz around it. I think with any epic fantasy kind of book, you know there's going to be some, a little bit of a convoluted story that ties into something that happened <laughs> a long time ago. There are going to be a lot of names that you can't pronounce and um, there's going to be at least an almost love story. I came into this book off of a romance bender so um, I really wanted there to be more more romancy kinds of stuff happening in this book but you know solving mysteries and death or whatever. So I liked the book. I think I ended up really thinking about it in a three and a half stars kind of range um, because it was so long. Her other books that I've really liked have been shorter um, and a little bit more kind of to the point. So I don't think I'll read the second book, which I know is not a popular opinion, but because I wasn't super excited about the first one, um, I feel like it can be over for me and I can move on to something else. Um, I won't go through all the books that I read, just kind of like some highlights. I reread via audiobook one day while I was working in my yard, The Whole Holes um, by Lewis Sacker. And I love that book still. I'd read it before after seeing the movie. I still love that book so much. Um, so that I think was a highlight. I read that one, like I said, while I was in the yard. Um, I did a post about the Library of the Unwritten, which I read. Um, I enjoyed it. I love books about libraries and librarians. And this is a librarian in hell who is trying to find a book that has gotten away from a couple of angels. So um, that one was really cool. I liked it. It was really different. different. Um, my chapters one post a few weeks ago chose the witch of Will the witch of willow hall and i read that i liked it um these two books were probably two of my favorites of the month new reads of the month 
um, one about angels and hell and demons and one about witches. Um, for this one, it was a little bit different than I expected it to be. It was much more um, Jane Austen-y. You know, there are a couple of siblings who um, have to get married to better their situation and their families. And uh, the main character loves, want, loves someone or cares about someone, not so much the person that they're supposed to really care about. Um, and, but then also um, finds out that she has these powers. So, and there's a, there's an event that has happened in the past that we are just given glimpses of until the big reveal towards the end. So I really enjoyed that book and I'm glad that I picked that one. The other two books that were from that post, I could not find in my house for a week. Um, and it turns out they are on a bookshelf next to my bed. Yes, I lost them in my room next to my bed. Anyways, I found them and I'll probably read them this week, uh, this month. Um, another book I read in May was The Glass Hotel. And um, this one was getting a little bit of buzz, I think because Emily St. John Mandel um, wrote Station Eleven, which was a popular, successful book a few years ago. So I read this one. It's about a, uh, I read that one too, but I read this one in May. Um, this one is about, uh, I think maybe four or five primary characters whose stories all overlap or link together because of their time spent out at a hotel where a whole front wall, a whole um, front, the front of it um, looks like glass. It's on a very remote, highly exclusive island. And one character, two, a couple of the characters work there. One of the guy owns it. Um, so their stories kind of come together. It's, it was it was interesting. I liked it. Um, it might be a good one to talk about with a book club because there were a couple of characters who made different choices where you're like, mm, I don't know if I would have made that choice, but then you kind of have to think about, okay, maybe I would make that choice. <laughs> Although I have to tell you, if I were um, single and didn't have any children and was young and wanted to kind of travel the world and a very rich man was like, hey, come travel the world and pretend to be my wife, I would totally pretty woman that shit. Can I say shit? Of course I can't. It's my channel. <laughs> I would totally pretty woman that shit um, for however long I wanted to. <laughs> and then I also read Mama Day, um, which I don't remember why I picked this up, but it was for a reason. I think it was on a list of kind of classic black books that everyone should read or something like that. Um, and it was good. It's about um, a woman who lives on an island down um, south, like south of Georgia, Alabama. The island isn't technically owned by anyone. And um, some of the kind of um, traditional beliefs and um, things like that, that the, the family believes. She goes up to live in, I think, either Atlanta or New York City, because those are exactly the same, um, and then comes back after she gets married. Um, so that one was really good. I reread another Brooklyn, um, which I liked probably better the second time, although I didn't remember the first time. Oh, and then my favorite romance of the month, it's really the only romance of the month, um, was the Bromance Book Club, which was super cute about a group of men who read romance novels in order to become better husbands. Um, so that was really cute and I really enjoyed that. I read Race to the Sun, um, which is one of the Rick Riordan Presents books. I didn't write down um, the name of the author. I think her name, her last name might be Roanhorse. So this is one of the mythology books um, based on Native American folklore. Um, that's part of his series, which is people from different cultural backgrounds writing stories, kind of like Percy Jackson was written. Um, he wrote that one and then he got other other authors to write other books. Um, Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky, was the African slash African-American one. And I really loved that one. I read that one in January. 
Um, what I'm currently reading is A Girl with a Louding Voice by, I believe, I don't have it, um, Abby Dare is her name. It The book is about a Nigerian girl who's 14 and her mother has died and she has been dreaming of becoming a teacher and making a lot of money to help her family who's very poor. But her bride price when she turns 14 is is high enough and the family is poor enough where her father forces her to marry um, one of the wealthier men in the village. As you might imagine, uh, she that's terrible. She befriends one of his other wives and then terrible things start to happen and she goes on the run um, from her home to Lagos where things do not get much better. So it's really good. I, I'm reading an audiobook, which is why I don't have it to show you. Hopefully, a picture of the book will show up here. If it doesn't, it's because I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Or maybe it'll be on this side. Or maybe it won't be on any side. It's written um, not in the kind of standard English that I'm used to reading in. Written in the language of someone who was learning English and then had to stop learning English a little bit early on. So the character finished primary school before she was forced to stop going to school to help um, her family. So some of the English differences are the ones that are common for people who are learning how to speak English. So um, pluralizing words that in the wrong place, like for example, she says eyes balls um, when she's talking about eyeballs or um, toes tips um, when she's talking about um, toe tips. Um, so some of those things would be harder for me to read fluidly. So I'm really glad to have it on the audiobook as an option. I will probably go back, depending on how it ends and how I end up liking the book, I might go back and read it written, but I know that I wouldn't be reading it as smoothly if I were reading it through my own eyes balls. Um, because my I get caught up in that sort of thing um, pretty often um, because I have to edit in standard English at work. So sometimes it's hard for me to kind of switch that on and off. So I'm reading that one. And then the other book, um, the print book that I plan to read either today um, or tomorrow is Afterlife by Julia Alvarez, who I've read a couple of her other books and have really enjoyed. And then hopefully those books that I ordered from the bookstore will come pretty soon or not because it really doesn't matter. Um, I've got lots of books around the house and the library has opened here uh, for pickup. So I also plan to take advantage of that this week if at, just out of support of them being open. Although from what I've understood, um, some of the local libraries have a waiting list for pickup appointments that are two and a half to three weeks long. People have really been missing the library, just just like I have. Here's something else I tried in May. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey! Dude, no! You gotta go like, like, hey. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> so if you didn't check out my most recent um, read out loud post, check that out. That book was in your hands. And um, click like on the video, even if you didn't like it that much, and then click subscribe down below because I'm really trying to get to 100 subscribers so that I can customize my URL. Not that I'm obsessing about it or anything because that would be ridiculous but my friends would really thank you because I could stop asking them if they've subscribed to my YouTube channel okay I think that's it and I will talk to you soon